So I'm going to talk a little bit about things that we do on the road to Exafit and Exafit is the work that Edmond is using is becoming a, a very used word, but essentially it's how do we get to the next level of performance. That's, uh, that's, that's what I'd like to do. So I'm going to take a little bit of a view of what happens and what needs to be up one point in order to get to the next level of performance. So if we take a little bit of go a little bit to the history part and, and one, from one side there is a performance increase and how you get from the uh, you know under the one thousand X to the one thousand X and so forth. And then how you develop the technology that then it is here to go to those performance So here they got the news we thought it was a move from S and to Duster. Why? Because clusters become more cost effective when you scale and increase performance and break the barriers of the cost of the system. So that was one element that enables to overcome the barriers that you get to much higher performance, which is more cost effective way to increase performance. If you look at uh, several years ago, the same thing happened uh, on, on the CPU side. We got to a point where you can only increase frequency anymore, so how you can get that and, and enable more performance in your system. That's it was moving from Singapore to Singapore, and I'm not saying anything to And that enables to again increase performance and scaling and, and build bigger systems and more powerful systems. Now we get into another goal. And there is a new elements that are being developed out there. Um, a new architecture, which we will start talking about more and more about that, um, which is co-design. So co-design, I'm going to several examples of what we've done in the co-design, but co-design tried to break walls that we start to see today in different elements of the system that hold paths of performance increase. And it really to go and make another step for dynamics performance, and then another step for dynamics of performance improvements here through a code design architecture, which includes hardware and application, software, and other things. So, essentially, what's underneath code design is that moving from having a focus on specific elements, instead of having a focus on a CPU, and just you know, work on a CPU and try to get the focus on a CPU. Or work separately on the network element, or work separately on storage, or work separately on the application perspective, it's going to take a look on a system. And the track, instead of trying to solve specific elements or specific issues on specific elements, try to look on the bigger picture and solve everything from a system end perspective. And then you can do more of this. So in co-design, there are several elements of this co-design. One of them is the co-design between software and hardware, which I'm going to talk a bit for the next down the science. But there are other elements of the co-design. Hardware and hardware co-design. So Jim Drake was presented earlier this morning, and I'm not going to go into details so of Jim Drake. But you direct this example of taking different hardware elements and instead of trying to solve latency on the network and then how you get data access to the GPUs, let's look into the what on, on the overall perspective let's see what we want to solve. That was an example of a code design between Ramos and Vidya trying to solve the GPU computing elements. And that resulted in GPU direct uh, Another code design example is software and software. And I, I put the robot UCX as an example and go into a bit more detail about what UCX is. But essentially, the software side, there is always discussions of we need to create a new API, we need something more to abstraction there, and things of that sort. Not sure if that's, that's the right way. The right way is maybe to look into how we can consolidate multiple more APIs that exist. And it provides something that is more comprehensive on one side, the other side for from a software offer. And this is the mission of UCX, which is another example of this. And then the data screen is an academia that essentially come work together, which is another one for example, and there are more examples which I'm going to cover in this slide. Essentially, the elements of doing things in a start way, open source, with deep system, under code design, 
that can improve programmable systems, configurable systems, so on, to bring innovations into the system. So this is an example of how code design can bring one of the performance works that we can use. And here I'm looking more the, on, on the internet. So looking 10 years ago, more or less, the interconnect entrants were running at around 10 microseconds, say, and see more. And then if you look at the application framework, the communication framework, the molecular operations, for example, those were the hundreds of microseconds. So today, you know, 10 years after, we managed to reduce latency in the interconnect element in one minutes. So going from 10 microseconds to 100 nanoseconds. The communication framework went down into 10 microseconds. So that's the density improvement there. Now, how do we get to the next level of performance work? We continue to reduce the communication the framework the, the communication uh, framework latency. So today we are in the text of microservice communication framework, if you look at connectors in our systems, the adapters or switches on the network side run in hand So if I'm going to continue to focus on the separate elements and connect all these network devices to zero. I reduce the sometimes of the tens of microseconds. But who cares? So the question how do I actually move and make other techniques and in the information framework? And it's not quite just focusing on network devices. No. It's by actually taking the communication framework and map it on the entire active components in the data center where we pass them. And by doing that, they can actually reduce communication frameworks in the number of latency in our and continue to improve the performance. So it's not a focus on, on specific elements and more because that's not going to take to the next step. The next step is looking on the communication framework and actually making all the active devices in the data centers to be part of the communication framework. So try to put it in a simple illustration. Running everything here will not enable you to go faster. Not me. Now one can argue that well, we're going to add more cores and more performance capabilities in the system, which is true. But if you look at the mission framework, it's not going to help you. So you have more cores, you have more jobs on the right? So more jobs are running. It's still being communicated all, all across the system. So you're going to try to reduce hundreds of nanoseconds from 10 microseconds of pressure. That's not a change. The way to do it is actually take all the elements you need to do and, and spread them on all the active devices. So you can use the multiple compute elements, CPU, GPU, FPGA, um, for example. Um, have the adapters, for example, be part of the communication framework. Which is what is being done in the last few years, you want more and more. But then start also looking on the switch for example. Um, it's another active device that exists in the data center or in the network, which actually can start taking part of the application framework. So, examples of code design is essentially, you know, the upper one is not code design. If you still find your thing on the CPU, you still can bring code design. And if you do back it, you can still find your thing on the CPU, that's also not code design. So, so code design is take advantage of any active elements of active components in the data center and use that for or to be part of the good communication framework. You know, in the future we probably not so good cables. It's elements that can do things. But right now it's gonna be a little before that. But those are things that exist and can essentially help to increase performance by 10 as before. So, key elements that exist, at least from our perspective, are based the code design approach. It is the offering technologies. And offering technology is essentially in high general is ability to take a framework that runs on a specific or a single element and spread it across multiple elements in the system. And it is the offering technologies that all the software defined as. 
totally defined for storage to but all those elements and it was software to go in and modify active components in the data centers and have them do things. Have direct communications between elements. GP direct is one example of direct communications from the GP to the network without going again through a CPU or a centralized element that needs to be part of any great communication. Direct communication from the PCA design, direct communications to the application at the end of the day. Um, RD and um, I also put the virtualization as an example. And virtualization in HPC, typically, if one tries to combine the two, the two words together, it's simply to kick out the room. The reason that I put virtualization here is not in the sense of the regular or the traditional view of virtualization where you want to run more virtual machines and physical because you're not using the system. In HPC, you do use the system. But the sense, the essence of trying to put virtualization here is to be able to um, separate between the hardware and software. And the separation between the hardware and software can come to solve resiliency or reliability of the issues of the system. So if we can actually move jobs on uh, from a physical box that fails to a physical box that exists here. You can say, for example, doing checkpoints and research. Check on the time or not the Now, you do need to um, find solutions to eliminate the performance bottleneck of virtualization. So, use the SR3 and other elements is one example. Moving virtualization, the management of all the virtualization, virtualization aspect out of the CPU and put it in other components can definitely help and minimize the overhead. But in the future, you probably have a secret use such as anybody can help to solve the uh, ability to resilience in the system. And there's back for the future compatibility, which is also important. When you add more things, you do want to make sure that your previous investment still works in the system. So from our perspective, simple, there's all the things that we're doing to help the numbers. And make the adapter very strong in co-processor. Um, you know, if you want to look on that, but that's an element that start doing more and more things. That essentially can help to increase performance and, and have the uh, the network works in parallel of the CPU, GPU, FPGA, you know, all that things. In the future, we'll also see the switch being part of. And then the switch sits in the center of the network. So if you use the switch for the remote for interesting things, which enables to reduce latencies dramatically in the port. So that's, that's about the code design. We're going to hear more things about the code design going forward. But it's in, in our minds and, and companies and users working with one of the key elements to enable the next level of performance. For us, um, some of the co-design work is being funded by the DOE as part of the core program. Uh, um, and, and the DOE does um, put nice amount of energies in order to develop technologies that are part of the co-design that enables the work to the level of performance. Uh, so as, as those technologies are being released out, we'll be more and more about it. So, um, I'll start just to give you a quick update for about going to uh, UCX, which is a good thing. Um, um, Mailbox for five second base motion for 100 per second. We announced Spectrum, seven so base signal, which is essentially the Ethernet switch, which have 100 per second of Ethernet as well. And then we have a complete solution for both the Ethernet and the Ethernet. Runs from 10 to 25, 40, 50, 56, and hardly a per second. On the cable infrastructure, both copper and fiber, and fiber and vixel on vixel based cables and also simple photonics based cables. So we are shipping simple photonics. Um, it is an option for 100 gigabit per second. You want to get the 200 gigabit per second. It's going to probably be more dominant options for connecting cables. 
look into some of the low-level performance numbers um, 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 just to give an indication of the progress of just the few latency and balance not uh, Two generations of FDR and the uh, um, first generation of VDR device, so moving from 50 plus to maybe per second, but a ratio of nearly twice, 195 gigabit per second. Latency is continuing to go down. Now, this is the latency of user space to user space. If you look on the actual latency of the itself, it is in a range of 100 so that, that's, that's where it is today. And then increased message rate, move to 35 to 105, and then to for almost 150 messages per second, and quite a nice one. Some uh, uh, performance examples of, of different applications. Those are coming from applications from Altera or Nils Dyna or LSTC. Difference between FDR and Media. It's definitely not just because of latency and bandwidth. I would say this is probably mainly because of more capabilities that are being put on the network itself. The point before. So, for example, when it takes sport in uh, vector reductions in hardware, and I think that is a great thing to do So that, that helps performance, I think, even greater than just that in the message rate in those cases. Uh, here's another example of WRF. Again, the sport scale, once you get to a 32, once you get getting close to a 30%, performance increase, and, and that gap increases with the system. Uh, um, EDR system started to be deployed in Q1 and, and in the last of the month there were three systems of EDR on the list. One in Europe, one in China, and one in the US. And for the November we expected many more systems on, on the top of the EDR. Another example, and, and sort that couldn't put the exact number, numbers uh, because of their descriptions, those numbers are going to our fear response. But Draw 500, another example, um, where EDR enabled more than 12 was close to 25% of performance improvements on uh, system size at 128 So that's another example. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, Unified Communication X framework, or UCX. And uh, that's another example of the code design, and actually four software software code design. Yes, and, and I put this as an example. Um, this is what it is. So you see it in, in a big word. Uh, uh, it was announced at IDC, so in July. And the motivation was to bring the next generation of HPC software framework. Basically, by not creating a new API that here there is one more, uh, more than two others, but Actually, we try to unify things that exist out there. And take the good parts from each case and then have a collaborative effort between the industry and national labs and academia. Um, so, the core of the company that started that was actually Amos, Oakridge, and Vidya, and IBM, uh, um, University of Tennessee, University of Houston. They were the core, core, core guys that uh, started with that. Um, Arco joined the effort, or some of us joined the effort, and most of us joined the effort. So the effort is obviously getting uh, strong momentum. There is more and more focus involved in the development uh, of the framework. Basically, uh, motivation was to take things that were developed, combine them together, and take that to the next step. So the core components were um, MSF from Amos, which was a um, framework to um, circuit and the Amos and the as you can see. Uh, IBM had Padme, if you're aware of that, so that's something they worked on. And then um, um, Oakridge were developing uh, a solution that was called UCCX. It was co-developed by Oakridge and, and also the uh, um, so the first step was to take those three together and combine them into one. So it's not that's another in the eyes, that's unified. 
And after creating a single API or a unified framework here, the motivation was to look into things that can be added or modified or changed in order to first support multiple um, communication frameworks on top of that, to support multiple systems on the list, and to reduce the software offer. So you want to go there as much as possible to the hardware levels and with that increase performance. So there's a question of API, um, which is focused on performance of content, uh, um, community driven, it's open source now, no? and people can learn and, and join the effort of these things. So there's three elements in the framework there's one for services that provide platform instructions and data structure, uh, there's another element for uh, transport. Uh, to bring um, um, work request setups and other things related to the uh, network elements. Um, and then elements that um, we call them protocols, so essentially it is easier for people to use uh, complex um, technology that exists, for example, in the protocols of the um, So this is, uh, um, um, sorry for this, maybe small font, but this is a kind of diagram of what PCX is. So on one side, supporting API management um, um, and, and other elements, and there's a lot of that, for example. So support multiple framework and document, or communication framework. And then to be able to support the different um, domain uh, uh, messages, RNA, is a domain, one the group, the stack messages, and other things. And then different transport. So there is for first, which makes cover infinite, but it does not create a broken, it does not iPod, for example. Uh, there is transport for credit devices, so Gemini and MPC. And then for shared memory um, um, elements and others. So, so the motivation is to be able to support multiple transports there, not just one. And it also reduces the overhead. The software offer is not the number of tenure. This software then go and work directly either on, on the hardware or on those elements of the hardware. So, in other fabrics, for example, there is an effort to create uh, um, accepted verbs as part of the verbs in the place. It enables to go much uh, faster or simpler to the hardware. And with that, we need some complexity. So I think I mentioned that before, uh, those are the core companies that, that create these sets. I'm going to see a very nice uh, and strong momentum on more people jumping. Uh, so now, we, we, we brought MXM, or we open source MXM into the UCX, which got the uh, infrastructure transport, shared memory, and other things. All of which brought the uh, UCCS which they can develop to support both RD and and create devices and share memory devices. And we have got the GP direct element inside, GDR copy and other things, I hear about packing, then uh um, UTK University of Houston um, help with the questions and, and research platforms. So those are the core cool folks. Um, and now we have um, an advisor who came that um, um, joined from other organizations as well. And we say very nice moment in, in the development of these things. So I'm focused on, on my side um, with UCM. This is the persons of food from uh, Infinity versus Aries and as well as get from Infinity versus Aries with the UCMs. Um, and it's showing very nice performance improvement there, or performance advantage. And again, the, the idea about PCX is not just unifying frameworks, but also reducing the, 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 the software offer. So to, to minimize uh, um, the penalty in the software part in order to um, go to bare metal performance settings. What is the idea that we get as items? So what is that technology that I wanted to present here, which is a new element called multi-option. 
Uh, we start talking uh, on Pontios uh, uh, several months ago, and we think that the technology can help to build a more cost effective and performant system. In the first very simple words, the motivation bug to the Pontios is to move from the traditional view of a server or rack design where you take a pizza box, have a CPU, and meat inside, and then move for pizza boxes to connect the rack. So a view of having the network as a shared device that can connect the multiple hosts. So today when you plug uh, uh, a dig into a service, the four socket server is set in this you have only two socket server. The next connect for a piece of express into uh, one of the sockets and the rest of the sockets connects to the network through that specific socket. What you get out of it, you get no benefit. <coughs> so you can hide latency from this view, for example, if you go to the network, you see the uh, bandwidth reductions and things like that. So that's the performance benefit. And then every box, you put an adapter for the goes outside. And determine the bandwidth that you need according to what's the system configuration. In the Mutos approach, the signal adapter can connect to the two hosts in its partner. So you can split the PCI Express uplink here, for example, into multiple separate PCI Expresses. Each goes directly into a separate host. In this case, every CPU can go directly to the network, so you just eliminate the from the And then, when you build the system, the network will be, for example, on the back plane. And then you can decide how many computer elements or which computer elements you put into the backpack, and then you can form the systems that goes HPC centric, machine learning with multiple GPUs, storage centric, and other things. So it's becoming a very config configurable system. Uh, beyond the performance element that uh, I leave a new effect here, if you don't need much communication from between CPUs, for example, when you want to jump on the CPU, you think there is no communication between them, there is no communication between the CPU and the So you don't run much in the You pretty much run the network of communication outside. And in this case, have in mind of taking a CPU without QPI, the first is taking a CPU with QPI, there is a big uh, cost advantage. You can take some CPU if you don't pay for QPI, you can save it. So there is also a, a cost advantage with like that. Of course, you're using one adapter versus multiple adapters and one cable versus multiple cables, and there is an even uh, uh, cost reduction on the network side. But there is also cost reduction on the CPU side. So this is what what um, uh, what Multios is. Another advantage is when you're putting GPUs in the system, and you want to take advantage of GPU direct, you need to make sure that the GPU and the network sits on the same Pizza Express root complex. So if you plug the GPU here, you get the GPU direct on the main. If you plug the GPU here, you don't get the GPU direct In this configuration, it doesn't really matter where you plug the GPU. You get the GPU direct from every Pizza Express here. So that's an active performance set. This is the first uh, uh, implementation of so the first system based on Pontios that was built by Facebook for their usage. The reason that Facebook took advantage of Pontios is that Pontios enabled them to build one chassis, single chassis, for different things. And when the chassis is being built, it's like this is the network part, so it's one part. And here you have four B sets for slots. And you can plug in the stock, you can buy, for example, you can buy a CPU card, a cartridge. This is an Intel CPU card. So you plug four cards here, and this is one configuration. And if you don't need that much of a bandwidth, for example, you can take uh, you know, an FDR device, 40 gig, 50 gig, and you can plug here CPUs, and here you can search for a web server. If you do want uh, the bandwidth, then you can take an XL54 cards here and then swap CPUs each one that will share on, on, on two slots, for example. 
So here you can trade the same pizza box approach. But you don't have to do that. You just do the And the, the way theory, just to give you a sense, this is the one third of the rep. So you can put three of them in one right way. Um, if you want to create a machine learning patterns, instead of putting a CPU here, you plug it in your time. So you can have one CPU to manage things and one for the things in one chassis. So, and, and another example is you want to build storage and, and you can put a huge amount of SSDs in the source instead of the CPU. So it's a signal design that enables to uh, use it for good for uh, applications in terms of what you type inside. And then, from an HPC perspective, it eliminates loop effect and gives you a deep direct from every slot out there. So, those are the metrics for HPC. We will see more systems coming from different vendors based on modules from those reasons. Uh, Facebook was the first one to go and demonstrate uh, modules in OCP in March. Uh, and this is something that uh, they're using their infrastructure. So, just to summarize, not to take much, um, um, one of the things that we do, make sure that the work correctly is to provide the best network for any computer that is out there. So, x86 is definitely the most of the systems are x86 based, but supporting also all the power distributes and all the many games with the same software infrastructure, the same hardware components, so you can essentially mix and match these for different components. Moving forward to 100 gigabit per second today, and um, moving towards a 20 gigabit per second. So we do expect it in the 2017 time frame to release 200 gigabit per second solutions and drive to the next day home. Now, those are the simple numbers. I think my perspective, the more important part is the code design and bring more elements on more handy devices to the next center switch, which is essential. And then it was the next uh, performance, uh, or make to the performance improvements. Yeah. That's it. Okay, yes, thank you. <laughs> and uh, was it? Yes. Please use the microphone. Is the uh, Facebook? System is that a 100 gig Ethernet connect, or they're using the cards as 100 gig Ethernet, or is that is they doing something special with the Man? Well, what I can tell you what Facebook demonstrated. So what Facebook demonstrated is a device here that can go and, and support 25, or it can support the way all the way from 10 to 100. Uh, what they demonstrated was the Ethernet device. Which does, uh, uh, I think the demo itself was running at uh, uh, 40 or 50 gig speed, but the device can go from 10 to 100. Um, now, the same device can also run in Philip. So it, it doesn't hold you, you can both in Philip. And the end, the term for Facebook demonstrated is the internet process. Any other questions? Just a quick clarification on the two numbers that you just. Uh, just a quick uh, clarification on that. So that was uh, the middleware was U6 in both cases. Just that uh, the underlying uh, hardware changed from IB to Aries, right? Well, it's Aries is a different system, but yes, it was the same CPU power, the same configuration, the same. Yes. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? So both the red and the blue line are using UCX. Both. So the the blue line is using UCX because it was tested on us. Uh, on the, the great numbers, is it is using UCX and it was tested in a different facility. Okay, so both are UCX. Yes. But they have different networks that you're comparing. Aries is, yeah, there is three Aries and they're different on other sides. If they have signed the customer, just. Uh, so, is that actually. So, the put for AB and the put for Aries, the, the, sim the completion semantics are very different. So I mean, uh, I mean, I understand that. Uh, so put for Aries when it returns on the sender side, on the initiator side, essentially implies that it has resident in memory. But on IB side, you know, it has just decides. Right? It essentially implies that it was acknowledged by the remote adapter. 
So that so we are putting on the same may actually because for example for port on USC to the IB, we'll have to do additional synchronization to guarantee that it's actually doesn't end up the probably don't have to do that for ABS. So as, as far as I know, the pull on the development side was actually all the time to pull the data in the Yeah. Okay. So again, let's thank Dilan. Um, so we'll uh, move to the next talk. Um, will be given by Martin Hilgerman uh, uh, from Dell, Netherlands. Um, so Martin has an advanced master's degree in physical and organic chemistry. Um, obtained at the VU University of Amsterdam. Um, he worked at HGI for 11 years uh, as a consultant and member of the technical staff.